Welcome, everybody. We are with Karen Pryor, who is the founder of Cl Karen Pryor Clicker Training Academy. Um, she actually just recently sold it to her partners, and she's now focusing heavily on research. I'm very excited to see uh, the research papers that she'll be producing. Um, you'll also know her as the author of the popular books, Don't Shoot the Dog, as well as Reaching the Animal Mind. So we are very happy to be here with you today. And our, our first question was, obviously you're here at Sparks 2014, and just generally, how, how are you liking the conference so far? Just some feedback we'd oh, like I to hear. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful to be able to hear all these different scientists loaded with data. That's the thing we've been starving for in the dog world. Uh, is actual answers and actual information. Uh, James and Simone and uh, Sam and, and having Tricia here, you know, really it's, it's a wonderful collection of speakers, wonderful collection of information. So nice to have them talking to each other and so nice to be able to talk freely, not just presenting research results, but also presenting you know, we don't know yet, this is what we're working on, here's what we're still asking ourselves. You know, the whole picture of what the scientists are doing, it's a terrific, it is a, I don't know anything quite like it. Very, very exciting. Has there been anything that you found particularly interesting or even surprising in the things that have been being discussed here over the last few days? Well, yeah, it, it's surprising to have so much solid information. Um, I, one of the things I was, well, interested, for example, in, in, in the, uh, the, the CERT, so what is it called, the part, the uh, James's study, the oh, James's. Oh, the sea bark. Yeah. Yeah, the sea bark. All the data on so many breeds of dogs, such in-depth data, so clear. Mm -hmm. None of those words were thinking, well, I don't really mean that when I use that word. You know, that came up over and over again, but it, not from those, not from those graphs to look at, you know, 20 graphs, one right after the other, and never go, oh, I guess I've seen enough of this now. No, it was terrific. And to me, one of the in really useful pieces of information to hop out of that was about dogs. It was about little dogs being neurologically and physiologically rather different, all, all to themselves over here, except for the two um, breeds, different from the big dogs. That explains so much. You know, we have always blamed it sort of on the owners. Well, these little yappy little, you know, they don't really train them, so they're not. That's not it. That's not just it. Dwarfing the dogs, and Ray Coppinger points out, changes a lot of stuff. And that was, I thought that was just very interesting. Um, so if you were to comment back to any of the speakers about anything that you would agree with or disagree with, uh, did you have any comments on that? Uh, well, yesterday, um, uh, Simon said that uh, that he uses the clicker, and we were all very pleased, the clicker trainers in the audience, and, but that he uses it uh, in such a way that he doesn't have to use the food, and so it goes from the click to just the, cl the click and the treat to just the click. And our, every, if we'd had a switchboard, every light would have lit up at the company. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's, a, it's something that we don't do. We don't go to just the click because um, because it washes out the click eventually, it, may, it has no value. It's that with the treat keeps the message in the click valid. And the, and the message is, is using it as a marker, as information to tell the animal what, it, what you are paying it for. Oh, that. So we see how we move very fast with that information. We can change the thing we're clicking very fast and shape new behavior very quickly. Uh, and it, it, if it doesn't, uh, work that way, then uh, then you're slowing the way down. You're slowing down the training Im immensely. So, I think the difference is when you're doing it in the lab, you have just one behavior, and as soon as, of course, in reality too, in real life, as soon as the animal understands what the behavior is, you don't need to click it all the time. You get rid of the click and the treat, and you go on to real life and put the behavior on cue so you can signal what it is, and then, then, then you use the clicker to develop 40 more behaviors and put them on cue. Uh, so it's a communication device rather than a reinforcement device. Because the communication is so important, and talking about Panksepp yesterday made me, I was so glad to hear that too, because, because he's very been very active in the excitement of, the, of knowing, oh, 
the excitement in the seeking system is also the excitement in, in knowing you're right, getting that click. Oh boy, yeah. you can feel it even yourself. It's, it's a, that's the little dopamine cascade. That only comes though with learning new information. Yeah. After that, if it's just about, oh, it means treat, you don't need to click anymore. You can have a replace the treat with life reinforcements, the chance to go outdoors or whatever is happening in daily life. Use the click for the new stuff. Yeah, sure. Do you think that, um, I guess that, just what you're saying, highlights the importance of having a forum like this event where trainers and scientists can speak to each other and share their information and, you know, the, I guess, perhaps applied people on the ground that are, are doing this work can say, well, I see the information that you're giving and I take that on board, but here, I guess, are some of the practical limitations of how I can apply that. So what comes next? Because we, we often talk about, you know, well, that's great, but so what? Or what now? And how do we translate that? How do we make it relevant? And I guess, do you see that being one of the great benefits of this kind of event? I thought that was very striking in this conference that everybody was talking about their research and why it's worth doing, what is going to come out, or what we hope to learn, what, what we can put on the ground right now. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought the... I thought the I thought the speakers all did a fabulous job of making their point, not only about what they're working on and why it's difficult and why it's interesting and all that, but why we people with one pet dog at home, nevertheless, would like to know this, need to use it, be able to use it. And also, I think for um, just about every dog trainer that's been listening to the scientists, there's probably scientists that are there listening to the dog trainers as well. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street, and the scientists listening to each other I, mean, I, I have a lot of, I have friends in the neuroscience community where we're doing one thing or then another with, with, with their projects and, uh, and they don't know each other. It's like that movie about holes where the people had to dig holes. You know, each silo in the ground is full of one kind of neuroscientist and then over here there's some other kinds and you go over here to talk to these about why their rats take six months to learn something? The rats only got 24 months, basically, of operative, you know, why, why does that take so long? I think we could do it by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and they aren't, they aren't talking to each other, so it's, this is a wonderful way to get just us talking to each other, the people doing the research talking to each other. It's very fertile. Um, and just thinking about what you're doing, because you have two major things going on, so at the, just at the Karen Pryor Clicker Training Academy, what are they moving forward with? That's what I'm interested in. And then also you and your research, what you'll be moving forward with. Um, our, our aim is to get all the people in the whole world not yelling at their dogs, much less their kids, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and really one of the things that we have been concentrating is to clarify what the difference is between the training that really works and the places where trainers get in their own way. And also to teach, to teach, uh, to to take our technology, which began in the marine mammal world, had, was, became very sophisticated in the marine mammal world and stuck there for 30 years. You know, like the Irish monks had keeping the literature alive, the dolphin trainers were doing that. Um, to get that information out into the wider world and, and to get it out accurately and train people, teach people to teach accurately, train accurately, but also to handle the people in their world with the same friendly technology, effective, that, that we use on the, on the dogs. And for myself, I have a new book in the works, of course, and I'm particularly interested right now in clicker training uh, physical skills in uh, medical students. We have a research program going on that uh, in a big hospital in New York with the orthopedic surgeon in, uh, as co-investigator, and um, that's a lot of fun. That shortcuts a lot of wasted time if you can get it accurate right away. Yeah. Yeah. Little things like training, those one-handed knots that surgeons do. Yeah. Well, you can teach that in six weeks or you can teach it in two minutes if you front chain it with a clicker. So those of you, well, I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dogs, I realize, but. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking. We're just like, our minds are boggling, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. all. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited. Um, so I, we wanted to thank you so much for joining us today, and this has been wonderful, um, and, uh, and we look forward to hearing more about what you're doing in the future. So thank you, Karen. You will hear, and thank you both very much. And thanks to Prescott for asking me to come in down. This has really been a lot of fun, a wonderful conference.
can't wait to see it again. Yep. Thanks so much yeah. for joining us. Thank you. So now we can...